Songwriter Sarah Bareilles and Tony winner Gavin Creel have been pals for a while, but now they are co-starring in her show Waitress. Broadway.com national editor Ryan Lee Gilbert recently caught up with the duo. As Waitress approaches its third full year here on Broadway, the show's creators are celebrating in a big way. Sarah Bareilles, the musical's beloved composer, is back at the diner, and this time she's brought along a friend to join her, Tony Award winner Gavin Creel. Going into this third year of Waitress, we wanted to do something special to sort of commemorate the launch of this third year. I really was itching to come back, at least for a brief spell. And so Gavin was the first call, and he said yes. I was. Well, I'll yeah. Be, I'll be honest. I was scared first. My first, my first response was like, "Are you, are you sure?" sure? <laughs> I was. I was yeah. like, I said to her, I was like, sure? "I was like, are you sure?" Partially because my friendship is the most important thing. Anything that could possibly jeopardize that or make it like, ugh. Nah, that made me nervous a little. Working with friends is a risk. You have great chemistry in your relationship and it doesn't translate mm -hmm. for whatever reason. We both are first and foremost professionals and we want to come to this job, you know, doing it well. Right. And then we want to take care of each other as friends. Luckily, the pair's chemistry translates with ease to the Brooks Atkinson stage. For Creel, the chance to play the flirtatious OBGYN who woos Borellis' lovelorn waitress is, well, delicious. I'm not you know, heterosexual. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the best thing about being an actor, yeah. is you get to play, I, in this moment, get to play out like a parallel life with this woman that if I were, I would steal her from her boyfriend, and no, I wouldn't, I would, I would wait for her to break up with him, and then I would ask her out, and we would have a wonderful courtship, and then we would get engaged, and then we would marry, and then, you know, because I love her, I love her so much, and it's kind of really fun to get to do all of the things that you don't, the flirt, the courtship, the confusion, the intimacy, all of it is played out nightly at the Brooks Atkinson Theater. And even though this is her third time starring in the show, Sarah is still discovering new subtleties to the role of Jenna Hunterson and the ways in which she brings her to life on stage. It actually did feel very different this time, and I am a different person than I was nine months ago the last time I did the show. We had like five days of rehearsal, mm -hmm. so there was a little bit of groundlessness about the whole process that felt like a little scarier yeah. than the last time. But at the same time, I really love that place on mm -hmm. earth. Like the Brooks and those people, that company, that band, that crew, these fans, like this is one of my favorite places in the entire world. So I love getting to go back. I guess I'm just older and more tired. <laughs> Which works for- Thank you. Like not for you, I mean, you know what I mean. For it does character. work for a pregnant, <laughs> depressed yeah. woman. <laughs> you are perfect for her. I know, right thank now. you. Thank you. In 2018, Sarah earned an Emmy nod for her turn as Mary Magdalene in Jesus Christ Superstar Live in Concert, co-hosted the Tony Awards, earned a Tony nomination for contributing to the score of SpongeBob SquarePants the Musical, and released the lead single off of her forthcoming fifth album. It's simple to say that her career has shifted dramatically since composing the score for Waitress. I always describe it as that my life falls into two categories and it's before Waitress and after Waitress. It has literally changed absolutely everything about my life, including the people I know and hold nearest and dearest to me. It felt completely impossible to begin this process. And then over the course of the last you know, five years of working on this show, I completely fell in love with it. I felt like a little kid and I got reminded of the fact that work can feel as inspired and connected and authentic and exciting, mm -hmm. you know, as anything you've ever done. And Gavin. Yes, sir. You have had a pretty big couple of years too. You won a Tony Award, yeah. Gavin Creel. How has that changed your dynamic with what you do for a living and the projects that you want to be a part of. So so saying yes to a project like Waitress is like, when am I ever going to get the opportunity to work with a friend in something that is so dear to her and something that's so dear to me? This show is very special to me for a million reasons. I realize because of my good fortune in the business and getting to do different shows and, and yes, winning that award, that I, I want to chase projects that excite me and are, ex and are exciting. And if they're not fun and they're not stimulating me creatively, I'm not going to go after them. The rare opportunity to see two stars who also happen to be close friends perform together in a hit Broadway musical won't be lost on any of the theatergoers who are lucky enough to catch them in the show. But it's Sarah and Gavin's dedication to spreading positive messages with their art that will continue to endear them to fans. In her letter to her baby, 
Jenna hopes that she becomes addicted to saying things and that they matter to people. What is a message that you say that you hope matters to people? I think it's right there. It's that you matter. You matter. You matter. That's what I think. Your perspective matters. Your voice is important. If it's not being heard, keep talking. Um, there are people who want to listen and to hear your story. Have fun. Follow the things that give you bliss. There's a lot of really magical stuff out there and there are magical people out there to meet and we both live by this, I think. Oh no, and be kind. Mm. Like Ellen, what does she say? Be kind to each other. Be kind to each other. And that's something we should all hear. Like just, you know, if you do matter and you want to have fun, be kind. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Good night. You should put that on a bumper sticker. <laughs> That'd be a big, I mean, you have to take up the entire back bumper. <laughs> if, if you, you do it matter, rolls off the it tongue. Just, like, wrap the and you'll want to have fun. Yeah. Also be kind. You're walking. Okay. Yeah. Whew. Trademarked. <laughs>